guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Murray Mend, also known as Liam. Hope everyone's doing our read in this mad, mad time. I'm in the kitchen today, not for cooking. No, not again. I am actually doing some hairdressing for you guys in this state of quarantine and um, isolation and um, scary times. I keep seeing everyone on Facebook doing haircuts and doing colours and messing them up and asking for advice and I, I feel it's my duty to help, I really do. I mean I'm not on the front line but I'm, and I'm certainly not a key worker but I'm going to really try and help as best as I know how to. So I put a call out on Facebook last night to see how many people um, were struggling and what you were struggling with. Lots of things came up, obviously cutting, colouring, um, there was a bit of platen, there was fringes. So hopefully in this video I'll be able to touch upon all of the things that were uh, I saw on Facebook. Um, hopefully if there's enough time. Um, if not I'll do a part 2 or part 3. Um, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. The first thing I want to do is talk about colour. Um, talk about hair colour in general. Uh, because I know at, the, at this point in time um, it's a bit stressful when the old translucents, the old greys come in or even if you haven't got any greys you've just got a little bit of a root um, so that can be a little bit daunting um, especially if you're someone who religiously goes to the hairdressers every three weeks um, time is going to be pretty scary not that it matters by the way that you, you've got roots because you're in the hoose so no one's going to see you anyway but it makes you feel better doesn't it so yeah, so I'll, I'll try and help. First of all, what I want to say is that the, the best thing you can do is wait till you get back till the hairdressers is back open where you go. And um, that is obviously my main point I want to get across. I'm not, I'm not telling you you should do home hairdressing. I'm just trying to help in in this situation, in this mad situation. Hairdressers know best, so they will know your hair better than anyone and um, especially if you go regularly so this is just an overview of trying to get you through um, until you see the your stylist with regards to highlights highlights um are a bit more trickier to do than your full head colors or your root touch-ups so um i'm going to do a separate video on highlights because i feel that we need to talk a little bit more in depth so I'll be putting that up next week so check that out next week if you've got highlighted hair okay remembering the basics any colour that you use you need a skin test 48 hours preferably before you do a colour and um, that just checks to see that you're not allergic to anything even if you've done the colour for years and years an allergic reaction can happen overnight so one day you might not be allergic to something, the next day you, you might. So it's best to do the skin test every time. I know it's a bit of a pain, but it's essential, okay? Ideally, if you live with someone, you know, they're the best person to do the colour with you, to help you. Um, if you're doing it by yourself, it's going to be a little bit more tricky, but not impossible. Okay, shall we meet my client? No, she hasn't got very much crack. She's not really much personality, um, but you know, she's she's good, and we we'll, we'll live together. So it, the social distancing thing is 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 there uh, is no bother. So we'll be showering, yeah. This is our shower. Like I say, she's not much of a talker. What you haven't done today, pet? You go on your holidays, or you'll not be going on your holidays now with this virus kicking off so what i've done um with regards to tools i'm not going to use anything too fancy because i i realize people haven't got that sort of stuff in their own house so i thought what i'll use is is just things that you might have so um i've got you know a comb and um, another comb now this is a it is a tin brush um, but if you haven't got one of these, you could use a, a you could use um, a paintbrush. Um, I have been known to use a paintbrush before, and you know it, it's basically the same sort of thing. It's just got you wouldn't be able to use the paintbrush again because it would stain. 
So this is these these are tricks just for now. I wouldn't recommend them for all the time. Okay. Sharon's hair is um, you know a pretty nondescript colour all over. So I wanted to really show you um, how um, to do a rooter application. So we're going to take Sharon darker. Okay. She fancies going a bit more gothicy. Okay. So what you want to do when you're doing um, a root application or even a full head application on um, on a head, you need to so you need to make sure you cover all of the root. Okay, so there's no point in just getting the colour and going like that and going like that because you you will miss bits. It's just impossible not to. Um, so. The way to do it to make sure that you don't miss any any root out and you any if you if you you know if you're green you put a dark colour on you you certainly don't want to miss any uh, root out. So what you want to do you want to do what's called a hot cross bun. And now the way you do a hot cross bun, you go from the middle. So you go up from Sharon Shazza's nose uh, up there. Now I haven't got a mirror in front of us like I normally have so you'll have to bear with me. It might not be exactly in the middle but you know what you're going to say. Now, okay so, so you want to from the nose right down to the nape of the neck. So you've got like a, it's in two. Okay and then you're going to do from ear to ear so like that like that now what I would do put the sections in a ponytail so you've got four sections now again this isn't a technique I would use because you know I kind of have been doing this a long time so I don't need to do this but this is to help you to make sure that you get the colour all over and again so we're going to do that with every section so we've got the four sections now with hairdressing it's really important sectioning is the key to everything it just stops you getting lost so again this is not something I would do myself um, to section off but it, it's something that is easy for you guys to um, so that you don't get lost within the colour so I'm going to show you so you've got so So again, from ear to ear, from the neck to the... So you can really see that hot cross bun effect. Um, and so I'm going to, now what I'm going to do is mix up a colour. Now, colour mixing, it you've got to obviously look at the box or whatever you're using on how to mix their colour everything's different and um, try and mix it in you know like a, um, if you haven't got a, a mixing bowl so I, I thought to myself I could use a mixing bowl but I wanted to make it as authentic as possible so I'm going to use a Tupperware so this is probably what you guys will be using Tupperware everyone's got a bit of Tupperware um, so I'm going to use um, a professional colour uh, by Weller called Colour Touch. Colour Touch is just a semi-permanent hair colour that opens the cuticle a little bit and allows the colour to sink in. Always glove up. I'm latex free. So we've got the colour mixed up. We've got our four different sections of the head. We'll start with the first one. I'm going to start at the front. So you might have a root that, that that's that big, you might have a root that's that big. 
um, you might have a root down your ankles, you know, it just depends. What you don't really want to do too much is overlap it too much onto the old colour, but because Sharon here has got um, all one colour, it doesn't really matter for this purpose, but what we're going to do, I'm just going to see, you can definitely see a root, I'm just going to paint it on like that. So, there's your first bit, wash Sharon. Don't make these, so I'm, what I'm doing, I'm using this, or you can use a comb, the forehead to the end of the section that you've got. So, we're doing one part of the, one part of the hot cross bun. So here we go. So you're painting just the root. Sharon's just got a little root, we'll decide. Me bother, Sharon. Oh, now we've got a bit on her forehead. We'll just get that off because um, you don't want a helmet heat. Although you do want to make sure the little greys, they're covered at the front. But I'll show you how to do that when we've, we've done the other sections. So you can see I'm just painting a little bit on. I mean, Sharon, it's scary times, isn't it? It's Corona. I thought Corona was the woman who sang Rhythm of the Night. So we're nearly done the first, the first section, if you like. So again, just keep, keep checking your head, because I'm using a dark colour. So I don't really want Sharon to be caked in it. So make sure you put your section back where you've been working on. So there's the first section. That's your first section. So now I'm just going to go go round and do exactly the same on each section for War Sharon. So this sort of application, if you're doing it at home, I would only recommend doing this if you had if a dark colour or you had um, a lot of grey and you were just covering it with a, a blonde, you weren't lightening your hair. So if you're lightening your hair, so if you've got a, a dark darker natural colour and you want your hair to be lighter I wouldn't do this method yourself because you don't really know how strong it is and you don't want to be putting anything too strong on the scalp whereas this isn't very isn't very strong and um, it's just enough to stain so just so I can see here so again I'm not doing too thicker sections but now the thing is with this sort of hair because it's come from god knows where um, and we're not sure whose it is or where it's originated from we don't know exactly what sort of coverage we're going to get but hopefully we'll get um, an even coverage so I've done the, the first two sections so you've got this section, the front sec section. So I'm just going to basically do the same on both sides.
So last section. Just hide some across the room there, that's not advisable. So yeah, so we're nearly done with the ball section of the hot cross bun. What does hot cross bun, where does that come from? Can someone tell us in the comments section? Hot cross bun. I don't like them for a start. But like, what's it about? Is it Easter? Something to do with Easter. We've done our four sections on Sharon. Talking of Sharon, never shuts up. So, what I would always say to do um, when you're doing hair colour is once you've done all four sections, you need to get a bit more colour and just always go around the hairline again because the hairline is very stubborn and there's lots of grey there and um, so really make sure because that's going to be the first thing that the client notices if you haven't if you haven't um, covered the grey so always go around and do that so there you go there's your, your root application of a colour so if you're just doing your roots you'll let that develop for however long it says on your instructions and there you're ready to go with Sharon because she's not the she's not the kind of colour um, that I'm doing the root so I'm doing the root like a darker brown and Sharon's a lighter brown on the ends so I think what I'll do I was going to take it all the way through and have it all one colour but I think what I'll do I'll do like a root stretch so we'll just stretch it out a little bit so it's a little bit more like ombre um, rather than just your roots okay so basically what I want to do is just kind of go back in and stretch the root a bit so just stretch it out now the good thing about this is it doesn't have to be too uniformed you can just be a bit creative Sharon really, she's quite up for anything Sharon she's very good one of them clients that you love because she's just like yeah do whatever Right, Sharon, I'm going to just mix a little bit more colour because you've got hair for England. So I've got the way I've just the section, I'm just, you know, taking it a little bit more down the hair shaft. Just to, just so it's not just the root, it's a little bit on the mid length as well. Like I said, Sharon's very easy going, but do ask your clients, you know, you don't just assume that they want to have a root stretch. Right. So that's one side. Okay, so I've just stretched that out a little bit. And now I'm just going to do the next side. So this is a little bit more, more advanced than just your root. But I thought I would show you it anyway because you know you've got a lot of time on your hands, let's face it. This is different to a balayage though, so just bear that in mind, you won't get you won't get the kind of tones you get with the balayage. Right, I'm just dragging Sharon by her hair, so that's not advisable to do to a client. Um it's not part of the it's not part of the NBQ dragon hair. And then we're gonna leave it to develop. So like like I said before, these are just my my tips for you. This isn't you know the only way to do this. Uh, and I'm not claiming to be Vidal Sassoon. Well 
there you have it. We've done root, then we've stretched it through, so it's called a root stretch, funnily enough. Um, and that just gives you that kind of um, darker colour going into a bit of a lighter colour. Um, just very gradual though, because I didn't want it to be like, to, you know, like black in the blonde. I just wanted it to be like a really dark brown into like a, a mid light brown. Um, just to give you an idea of what that can look like. So I'm going to let that develop for 20 minutes. Then we're going to come back, I'll wash it off. And um, I'll show you how to do a little trim on War Sharon. Um, yeah, to get you through the quarantine. So um, I'll be back in 20 minutes. Peace. Sharon's back. Um, freshly washed, shampooed and conditioned. Ready to um, be cut and blow dried. Remember, can we have a little bit of a recap on this situation? Um, this is a, for a regrowth or a root touch up. Um, it's a darker colour. So if you've got blonde hair or you've got bleached hair, don't do it the way I've just done it. Because that, that's, uh, it's a little bit more technical and I really, really would advise you to wait until the hairdresser is open. As for this sort of colour, it's almost like you're adding colour. So it's not kind of stretching your hair too much um, with regards to uh, breakage and stuff. So it won't um, damage it too much. So what we'll do, um, we're going to do the cut now. So again, if you can wait till your hairdressers is open, I would obviously recommend that. But if you really can't, if you've got a dry end, let's be honest, no one likes a dry end. So what we're going to do, we're going to um, trim those ends. Now, Sharon's facing forward. Um, it's just so I can show you the back of the hair. Now with... Doing a, we're going to do a one length haircut this is essentially. So try and get the sharpest scissors you can get. Preferably none that have got um, bacon fat on from the kitchen. But if that's all you've got, that's all you've got. Remember the section and technique we used for the for the colour where we did the, two, the four. I'm just actually going to use that again. So I'm not going to use the ponytail as well because... We're, we're too advanced now, so we don't need to do that, but so you can see from ear to ear What you want to be left with is two sections at the back So I've turned Sharon round so you can see So you've got one there, one there. I like to think of it as an orange So you've got you know a segment 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 we are going to cut This segment and this segment first so what you want to do always, this is what I do anyway, like I say, lots of people do things differently, so don't always take my word for it, look around, see what other people are doing, um, I'm not saying I'm, you know, by any means the best, but keep your section nice and neat, Ooh. so can you see that across the back, it's quite straight, so if you've got one of these, that would, that would be great. So what I want you to do is just get rid of the other hair and pop it up there. So this is your first, your first section that you're going to cut. Now this section is really important because all the other sections are going to be brought to this section. So technically this is your guide, your guide cut. Okay, so whatever you do here you want to match it up with the rest. I'm going to take about an inch. Okay. And I'm very good. I know my inches. This is one of the most important things that you can get right. Now, it's all about angles in hairdressing. And if Sharon's got her head up or her head back, then the hair is going to fall on a different angle. Okay. So if you cut Sharon's hair, when her head's back like that and she puts her head forward you can imagine all the underneath is going to be different lengths so what we do in hairdressing that's why we ask the client to put her head down because then when it's down you, you cut it and then when it, she puts it up it's all one length okay so really important that the client puts their head forward okay so I'm going to do that Head forward, Sharon. Oh, she's really got the really got the neck muscles. Up. Right. 
and then I'm going to take my first section keeping it very tight you don't want to be doing that you don't want to be cutting like that you want to keep it as flat to the neck as possible um, and then just take take what you think off so there you go so I've took an inch off and it's just really straightened up the back and now all I'm going to do is take the same sections and then head down still and then just wherever my guide is because I can see it just take the rest of the hair to that length so what's the most important thing when you're doing the one length I've just told you that's right keeping the head forward forward at all times only on the back though this is it this is this is just for the back so now if the client's got laid hair then eventually you'll do this and there'll be nothing to cut because it'll be laid so that's okay okay so once we've done that we've cut the back okay we're going to put Sharon's head up a little bit and then we're going to go on to the side obviously the side the side hasn't got as much hair as the back because if you think about it where the ear is at the back you've got all this hair but in the ear you haven't so so all you're doing is you're making sure the head's straight this is why it's important to look into a mirror basically where your guide is from the back that you've already cut okay you've cut this you're just basically lining that in so you're just taking it round so so for the side the head doesn't have to be forward because again if the head's forward and then you put your head back it's going to be shorter here so you just need to keep the head straight on this area and again now you can see Sharon has got a side parting but what I like to do I like to explain to my clients that if they have the hair cut in the middle they can wear it on, a sta on the side but if they wear it if they don't get it cut in the middle and they get it cut on the side then it, you get long bits hanging over so I always like to cut in the middle if that's possible unless someone really insists and then I just say no okay we're going to come around the other side again always always checking that it's straight because you don't want it asymmetric well some people do but Sharon's not wanting it asymmetric at this, at this point okay so with wet hair when hair is wet it's stretchy so that's why uh, most of the time um, hairdressers don't like to do dry cuts because they like to, to cut it wet then dry it off and then check the cut when it's dry so that's exactly what I'm going to do now and um, so when it comes to blow drying if you want to make the effort in quarantine and um, you know why not um, I'm putting a little bit of mousse on Sharon's hair uh, to expand the shaft area um, really working the product in like I, I can't stress enough it's all about sectioning so when we section um, for a blow dry 
a blow dryer is a bit like a brick wall. You need to get the bricks at the bottom cemented in so that the top can lie on top. So with that in mind, we're going to start at the back. We're going to put a bit of root lift in and then once we've got the root lift in, we're going to take it through the ends. Okay, so I'm just going to do it and um, just observe. Uh, you'll notice that I'm um, blow drying the root first. So what I like to do with all blow dries, and I would really recommend this at home, um, your hair goes through a process of going from um, wet to dry. Uh, in that process, it'll go in the middle, it'll go like frizzy, you know, like that horrible moisty, and start there. So you want to get some of the water out, is what I'm saying. So just don't be afraid. I'm using a medium heat retaining brush. The heat retaining brush um, will heat up here with the dryer, helping you get that bit root lift. So if you want a bit, a bit of a bouncy blow dry, use one of these. And like I said, I'm just gonna dry the roots first and then I'm gonna go through to the ends. Okay, so you can see there's a bit of root lift here and then we'll need to smooth these ends out. So smoothing the ends out is all about turning the brush, okay? It's a bit difficult with Sharon being on a stand because she wants to move about, but don't be frightened to get a little bit of traction. Sharon, that's absolutely gorgeous pet. So as you can see, start to see now the colour is coming out, very shiny and um, with a bit of bounce. So, so I'm going to do the back first and then I'm going to come to the sides and then I'm going to give you, show you a trick for the front so you get a bit of lift there as well. So what's really important guys is when you're, uh, you have the hair dryer um, if you're doing it yourself or you've got someone else doing it what you don't want to be doing is this because what you're doing you've blown the cuticle out so you want to be making sure that the hair dryer is pointing the direction of the hair okay quite hard to get these really smooth because I'm sure the hair is from a Yorkshire Terrier um, but we'll do we'll do the best we can. The root dry food, the root dry food. Try not to if possible, try not to rest your dryer all the time on the brush because if you've got a tat, like a, a little bit of hair that gets caught and you, you've got the dry on, the dry will singe the hair um, and obviously break it, so that's what you don't want to do. So you want to keep them moving, fl flowing as much as possible. <laughs> hey Sharon, look at that colour, it really brings out them eyes. So, oh here's the dog. You have to have a couple of blow pet. No, just some water. So, straighteners. Straighteners obviously can do a lot of things, you don't have to have it straight. Um, I'm going to check the cut again by putting the head forward. Just checking the back, it's fine. Yeah, no long bits. Make sure there's no hair tucked behind the ear. Sharon's eye Another thing people have been asking is how to curl hair with the straighteners. Now, I know people really struggle with this, so I'm going to just show you a little few little tips now I would always recommend some sort of protection yes and um, we're going to use bedhead uh, which is head rush it's got no holding so it won't go sticky it's basically just a shine oh that's great on the camera lens that great you alright there Sharon you haven't got any um, breathing difficulties have you depending on how tight or loose you want the curl you would get a section if you want a, a 
smaller curl, just get a little section, pop your straightener in. Now you can go either way but you've got to let it flow. So I suggest you put it in and then you just turn it gently. Pick that up and then keep turning it. That's what these are for guys on the bottom of the straighteners. Now, so that's your, your tight, your tight curl. You know, quite in trend at the minute with the 80s coming back, especially for hair. Watch out perms. But um, a lot of people are still having the looser curl, the wave. So again, just take a, a bigger section in and as long as you're smoothing it round you're all right now let that don't touch it when it's warm that's a top tip a lot of people go oh it's too tight it's too tight but then when they're doing that when your hair's warm your hair's pliable so if you're pulling your fingers through warm hair you're literally essentially pulling the curl out so what you need to do is let it cool down then you can kind of play around with it so again just taking a section in and just very gently just turning it now you want it tight enough that it's closed but you don't want to press it too close that you're pulling that Sharon's hair out do you know what I'm saying because she wants a curl not a not a bald spot again change direction so I've been going back over if you want to go under that's again that's fine so I'm just going to do the rest so the thicker the section it can be the looser the curl. So if you just want to like a few a few kind of waves, just do big sections, but just bear in mind that it can, it, the longer the hair, the, it can drop out quite quickly. So while I'm doing this, should we just talk about quickly about color selection? Because everyone's color is different. So when you go to a supermarket, I mean, it is essential, let's be honest. Uh, or if you're looking for a hair colour. Now it's a universal hair chart, you know when hairdressers show you the chart in the hairdressers. 90% um, of the world are the same uh, with the numbering system, especially the naturals which are um, normally from 2 to 12. Um, 2 being black, 12 being the lightest blonde. Obviously this can vary from um, brands. You need to look at your hair colour and you might think you've got brown hair but brown hair can also be a 7 uh, but on a shade chart it, it says um, dark blonde so you've got to be careful. What I would say when choosing a colour you might say colours that say 7 stroke or seven dot five three. Now, what we're wanting to do, we're wanting to just get through the quarantine stage. So don't look for a colour that has a point, something. Just go with a colour that has a natural base on it, because you just want to keep it simple, really. So say you got something that was seven four three. The four and the three is gold and red. Now you don't want that necessarily in your hair, if that makes sense. You, you could, but if you've got a lot of grey, you don't. You might not need a lot of four three in. So you, you it, what I'm saying is, it, 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 it's easier to go wrong when you complicate things. Just keep it simple. Go for something that looks like the colour of your hair, but just with the one number. So like I say from um, 2 to 12 but like I also said before if you want 
a blonde like to lighten your hair that's a different process so I'll cover that on a later a later date always turning okay you always want to be turning that way you're not damaging the hair and remember to use the bits on the side and if you can see any steam that's all it is, steam. People think your hair's on fire, but it's not. It's just leftover moisture that's been in your hair from the water. I like to hold it there sometimes, so I'm not, not pulling too hard. And also, when you're doing around the front of anyone's hair, just always be conscious that once you've done the curl, you don't just drop it over the face like that, because you will Burn Sharon and Sharon will be furious. So, like I say, we're going to let that cool down. This side will be cool, just check it, touch it, a bit more shine on your hand, and then we can start working with it. Got a bit of root lift, we've got a nice bit of wave there. Gee, Sharon, you are really not a good pet. Check that wave, yeah, check that heat. Just run your fingers, use your fingers as a comb. Check any little ends. Pop a bit of hairspray on that if, there, if there's any little ends. And there's Sharon, all ready for our social distancing. There you go, you can be admired from afar. So there you go. Any questions, please put it in the comments section below and I'll answer you. And I hope that's helped a little bit. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've got a lot out of it. And I hope that you try some of the techniques and let us know how you get on. Okay. Happy quarantine. Peace.